Choose peace, stop violence means to make a conscious decision within yourself, a personal decision to choose peace and to do good instead of bad. When you're bullied by someone, you actually feel less of yourself. And um, I think you need someone to like bring you up a little bit more. And um, that gets you the strength to go to someone else and be like, hey, you know what? I'm getting bullied by this person and I need to do something. Choose peace and stop violence. Hi, and welcome to this special episode of Reality Avenue's character series. I'm Stacy. And I'm Bryce. And today, we're talking about bullying. By choosing peace and stopping violence, we can stop bullying before it escalates and someone gets seriously hurt. So how can we keep ourselves and our friends safe? It starts with us. We hold the power to stop bullying. How? With these three puzzle pieces. We need to know what bullying is, why we should care, and what we can do about it. So let's get started. So how is bullying defined? Bullying is intentional, repeated, hurtful action against someone who has less power. Bullying can be verbal, physical, or emotional abuse like exclusion, rumor spreading, and cyberbullying. We use the acronym RIP to help us remember what bullying is. It has to be all three. R. Repeat it. I. Imbalance of power. And P. Purposeful, with the intent to harm another. Watch and see if you can pick out the R, the I, and the P. <laughs> OMG, look at him, a pink shirt, that's so gay. Totally. Did your boyfriend get you that pink shirt? I asked you guys yesterday to stop calling me names. I don't care what you want, nobody likes you here. Come on, let's go. That is bullying. Nobody should be treated that way. But why should we care enough to stop it? When bullying happens, we're almost always involved as either the person doing the bullying, the target, or the bystander. The majority of us are bystanders, about 80%. This is who the person bullying is trying to impress with their cruelty. When bystanders try to help and let the bully know their behavior is unwanted, the bullying usually stops within 10 seconds. But peers are only intervening about 10 to 20% of the time. Why so little? One time when I saw bullying, I didn't know what to do. I was scared and I was nervous like because I didn't want to get hurt and I didn't like want to like get the other person hurt. All students don't stop bullying because maybe they're not brave enough or they just don't want to be that outside cast. I can stop bullying by talking to my friends how bad it is. You know, if I see someone's about to fight, I would tell them don't do this because of this and that. You know, I'll let them know that it's not worth it. You know, why try to solve a problem by making another problem? When I see bullying, um, I don't rush into the situation. I use, well, now I would just tell an adult, find an adult that's closest to me. The bystander is the one that has the power to go to someone instead of, like, going like, yay, fight, fight, fight. Go to someone. If you're the bystander, go to someone. Go to an adult, go to a teacher, go to your mom. Someone that can back you up because the strength is in numbers. When you see someone having an argument or you see some, a group of kids getting ready to get in a fight and you're on the side saying fight, 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 you're egging them on to fight. But if you're the one that's saying, okay, guys, let's not do this, and then there are other friends see you not doing it too, they're like, all right, yeah, this is not cool. Let's all back up. Let's not do this. Bystander fears are almost always based in myths. Let's replace them with the facts. Myth number one, they'll retaliate and I'll become the next target. Truth, if I do nothing, the bullying increases and I'm more likely to get hurt. Myth number two, if I try to help, it will get worse. Truth, any help is wanted help. When peers intervene, the bullying stops within 10 seconds, most of the time. Myth number three, I can't prove the bullying happened. Truth. It's not about proving for punishment, but helping and stopping the abuse. I can't trust authority figures. Truth. There is always one adult I can trust. Bullying rates almost always decrease with effective adult intervention. Myth number five. Ignore bullying and it will go away. Truth. Bullying will continue to escalate if ignored. Myth number six. Bullying is someone else's responsibility. Truth, I am part of the problem and the solution. I hold the power to choose peace and stop violence. Myth number seven, targets need to learn to stand up for themselves and deal with the situation. Truth, targets are usually younger or physically smaller than their attackers, so they can't deal with the situation alone. Myth number eight, if there's no blood, it's not serious. 
truth. Emotional bullying is often more damaging than physical bullying. Myth number nine. Teachers know if bullying is happening. I don't need to tell anyone. Truth. Bullying can be subtle and often happens out of the teacher's sight. They need your help to know so they can stop it. Let's look a little closer at the fear of losing friends because no one will like you if you intervene. You look like a freak. Can you really not afford contacts, Four Eyes? I like my glasses. Oh, you're not going to date yourself. Good luck finding a boyfriend looking like that. My mom said they're pretty. And your mom's just as much of a freak as you are. It's really disgusting to accept it. Here you see a student who was afraid and didn't help. But watch again as this student does help in a simple, non-confrontational way. Which student would you like to hang out with? Who has the most character? The brave one, of course. The fact is, students respect and prefer to be friends with the student who helps. Targets of bullying suffer both short and long-term damage, like missing school out of fear, trouble studying, bad grades, depression, and thoughts of revenge and suicide. But did you know that the damage to bystanders is real and lasts too? Bystanders who don't intervene feel fear, guilt, shame, and helplessness. They also lose faith in the helpfulness of adults, school connectedness, hope, and empathy for others. So what's the best way to intervene? Jumping in the middle of bullying and getting hurt is a common fear, and never do it if it isn't safe. That's only one way to help. We can intervene directly or indirectly. Each situation calls for a different approach, so find your own style. So here are some direct interventions. Distract. Say to the target, hey, can you help me with something over here? If you know the bully, later talk to her alone and share how others may be seeing her behavior negatively. If you know a bystander encouraging the bullying, Talk to her later about how she's making a bad situation worse, and that isn't the kind of person you think she is. Here are some indirect interventions. Speak to the target later. Say hi. Show respect. Invite them to lunch. Introduce them to your friends. Or offer to walk with them between classes. Get help by making an anonymous report. A lot of students fear that reporting is snitching, but it's not. Reporting is telling. It's done to help. Snitching is tattling, done to get someone in trouble over silly issues or things you could have handled yourself. The fact is, we tell to help, protect, and keep others from harm. Heroes tell. Here's the perfect example. It's two in the morning and your neighbor sees a man crawling into your bedroom window. Do you want him to call the police and tell? Or close his blinds and say, not my problem, I'm no snitch. You aren't doing your friends any favors by letting them learn to abuse others. The fact is, students who bully are much more likely to drop out of school, have criminal charges, have substance abuse issues, and commit family violence as adults. If no one helps them learn healthy ways to meet their need for power, they will continually abuse others, even though they are hurting themselves. Bullying can be reduced, but it will never completely go away. Prepare yourself for the day someone says or does something unkind. If you have a one-liner ready, you'll feel more confident. You can practice in the mirror by yourself, with a friend, or even your parents. Use the acronym SAFER to remember the best ways to respond. When approached by bullying, we want to... Stand positive and strong. Use body language like eye contact. Stand tall and stay calm. Use I statements like, I don't like being called names. I want you to stop. And then if they continue, back off. You can even agree by sticking to the facts. Yes, I have glasses. Okay, you be the bully first. All right. Um, you're ugly. Okay, I'm going to use stand strong and positive. So I'm beautiful and I want you to stop. Great. Avoid the situation. Avoid places, times, people who are dangerous. Don't be alone. Make an excuse and exit if approached. Well, are there any people or places that we should avoid? Um, probably lunch. We'll sit together, and if one of us has to go somewhere, we'll ask Joe to sit with us. Sounds good. Find support. The best comeback is to ignore their words and go to supportive friends or adults. And also, we can talk to the media specialist, Miss Wallace. Um, she's always there for us, and she'll probably let us hang out in the media center. Sounds good.
express your feelings. Talk to those who can support you and support yourself with positive messages, the opposite of what is being said. I'm smart, wonderful, a really good friend, and I deserve to be treated with respect. And redirect. Change the subject. Distract the bully by asking an unrelated question, such as, what time is lunch? You can even use humor, if it's your style. Um, maybe change the subject by saying something like, you know, what's for lunch? Or even a joke. You know, if you think I stink, you should smell my friend. He makes right guard turn left and speed stick slow down. <laughs> there you have it. Now you know what bullying is, why we should care about it, and how to safely intervene and respond. A final word to those who are being bullied. Remember, it's never your fault and you don't deserve it. If it happens or if you feel threatened, make sure to report it to your parents, a trusted teacher, or your principal. Otherwise, it will get worse. If you're bullying others, Ask yourself why. Is it for power and popularity? How can you meet these needs in a positive way? Use your strengths and talents to help, not hurt others. If you're unsure of your motivations or how to change, reach out to your school counselor. You'll be glad you did. When the rest of us bystanders work together, we can accomplish great things. We all hold the power to choose peace and stop violence. Thanks for joining us and creating the safer, more respectful school we all want. We have the power. I hold the power to change the world and stop bullying. I have the power to stop violence. I want peace. I can stop bullying by being an agent of change. If I show people through my actions that it's possible to stand up to the ones that think less of us, then they can too. So remember, character is the core of our lives and who we choose to be. There is not a spot where character is not. See you next time on Reality Avenue's Character Series. Bye. Bye! For more information and resources on bullying and violence prevention, or on how to build your character, please visit the Office of Prevention's website, BrowardPrevention.org. These videos have been made possible through funding from the Partnership for Character Education Initiative.